I read a while back that bats um, consume a minimum of 600 mosquitoes a night. Except if it's a, a lady bat, and a, like bat woman, a lady bat who's busy feeding her babies, then that figure shoots up to an excess of 1,200 mosquitoes. Um, I want that here. <clears throat> bats can turn those mosquitoes and other night insects, certain moths that lay uh, eggs in your, in your pumpkins and in your fruit and that mess up your, your, your harvest, they can turn those insects into manure, or in their case they call it guano, but it's the same thing. Um, there's also two different mechanisms. It's not just a direct predation by the bats, but also the fact that the, the uh, uh, prey species' behavior changes. So there's serious behavioral modification that you find. Uh, for example, they tested in America where there was some weevil that was eating the farmer's cotton fields. And uh, it came from a moth. And when they played the sounds of bats, now our ears can't hear that. They use some type of an ultrasound. But when they played the sounds of the bats uh, over those fields, the amount of damage <clears throat> caused by those moths reduced by 50%. And that is a significant difference. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to build or at least start on building a bat house and see if I can finish it. Um, I got a couple of plans off of the internet and I'll show, I'll put them up on the screen. But here in the background, here's just some of my drawings that I made. It's going to be a rocket bat house. So here we, can, here's, here we have the, the center pole. It's going to have a shell around it, and uh, the pole sleeve, and then it's going to be an inner shell and an outer shell. So I'm going to start on this guy. And uh, all of it is just going to be made out of, I'm not buying anything. It's just scrap pieces of wood, that's all. Okay, since I've never built this and I don't really have a plan with any metric measurements and the plans that I do have um, are, first of all, they're in imperial measurements that I have no idea. It's a lot of effort to go and sort that out. But they're also for, for a steel pole that is perfectly uniform all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom over there. Right. I don't have that. I've got a wooden pole. Uh, so I'm going to be designing this thing. I've got an idea of the concept, but I've got no idea of the measurements. I'm going to be designing the, the, the bat house to sort of fit the, the size of this and, and just sort of adapt it to what I've got here. So uh, this is an important part. This is the critical part. Um, the one I'm building is a, is a rocket bat home. So what, what happens is, the, with, oh, let me just zoom out. With a rocket bat home, it fits over that like a sleeve. All right. Uh, it's not the flat one that you put against the wall. I don't have walls around here that I can put things up. Everything around my house is already taken up with something else. Uh, so, But I can put this one out in the yard, uh, there in the, in the food forest, where I hope it'll, it'll serve its purpose. So this is one of the first things. There's a couple of pieces of scrap wood over there. There's some nails that came out, out of an earlier project. And then I there's some more... Uh, wood over here as well, pieces of scrap wood that people came and they, they asked us the other day if they could come and dump some wood here and I found some pretty good pieces, there's a lot that we can do with this. Um, and so yeah, it's all going to be recycled stuff. Okay, so I decided to put the, the pole up here so I can have a, a sort of a visual idea of, of how this thing is going to, what, what it's going to look like uh, when I'm done. Um, these are some of the planks. This is the first first one I cut, 112 centimeters. You can see this thing is is warped. You can't really use it for anything else except maybe a planter box or wood chips or something. But it should work if I put it up here. So this will be the first, and it will go quite from all the way up there down to here. So it's just about a meter and a little bit from the bottom that's still left. Um, so this is going to be the, the inner, uh, the, the pole sleeve, the first part, using this piece of basically throwaway wood. Okay, so I uh, looked at, at, at this thing, if I put the, let me just go to wide angle here. 
come on, there you go. Okay, so if I take this, which is, uh, I think this is 2.1 meters up here, and I put a, a 112 centimeter, which is that, let me just get it. I put this one up there, that'll be the top of the bat house, and then that'll be the bottom entrance by the end of this thing, a little bit higher than it actually, then there's only that much. Now I still got to put this in the ground up to, at least up to there. So this is, this is going to be too close to the ground. So I just spoke to our local Agrimark, if I build that thing onto a uh, 3.6 meters, I think is what Adrian said. Let me just check here. Yeah, I can get a 3.6 meter pole for 136 Rand. I think that is worth it. So, uh, let's see. Now, if this is the 3.6 meter pole, this is measured down here, you can see 3.6 meters. Okay, so there's the, that would be the whole length of the pole. And we bury it up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 600 mil deep. So that's how deep I bury it. And this is, that is all going to be the space still above ground before we get to the, to the bat uh, entrance, that'll be here. So this will be quite a, yeah, this will work perfectly. This will be great. This will get a small little roof on top here, which I'm going to make. Also, everything's going to be out of scrap. So yeah, this is great. Okay, these three are at the right length, and uh, that's the right width. This will go on the outside like this, and then the other one will come on that one. That one will come on this side, so we need to still adapt uh, the right uh, size there. But um, in the moment of, of overzealous excitement i went and i made this one i made the cut here to make this one the same width as uh, these guys so now sometimes i'm i'm blessed with most or cursed with more stupidity than i like to like to admit so now i had to stick this back together again i wanted to try and finish at least the rocket today i won't be able to continue for now so uh, this will have to dry out and then I'll carry on with this tomorrow or next week or whenever as soon as I've got the opportunity. One of the things I can continue with, <coughs> if you look here at the pole sleeve, you will see there are lines in it. Those are slits that get cut into it so that the bats can come in from underneath and can crawl up there. So the pole sleeve only has it on the outside. The inner shell has it both inside and outside because that will be around this thing the bats will be able to move in there and then the outer shell only has it on the inside so i can at least make these slits on the pole sleeve today while i'm waiting for the wood on the last piece to to dry out okay so i'm busy making the slits in this using the miter saw And what I did was I just marked off uh, about every two centimeters. I made a mark. And so now I'm just cutting these slits in here. This is now the first one of the lot. And so it's going to get the slits all the way down to down to here at the bottom. This, this last bit will stick out about that much. It will stick out so it will give the bats a landing spot here. And then they can, they can crawl up that and go all the way up in there to get to a safe space. Right, so here's the first part. <clears throat> I'm sorry if the lighting is a bit crappy. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning. And uh, so I have to use a lamp. But the first one is done. Um, that's about how deep it goes in there. I don't know if that's the preferred step size for, for, for bats. But uh, I don't think they need more than that. So uh, yeah, now for the rest. Seems I was wrong about the time. It wasn't one o'clock. Anyway, so the the second one is done. There you go, all the way down there. And uh, 
I'm not going to do this one now. This other one that I messed up earlier, the glue will be dry by now. But I think it's really time for some shut eye now. I'll carry on tomorrow morning, probably finish it on Monday. All right, okay, so I have all four the pieces. And I'm sorry for the lighting, it's, it's dark here in the room, it's the middle of the night again. And so I'm using the camera's lamp. Um, th this is the one that I'm, I've now that, I, that I've now clamped this one in here. I mean, I want to try and glue and screw at least this first one. And you'll see if I stand over here and I hold the camera like that and I go down over there, you'll see how much it's warped. You'll see over there how much it's gone over to that side. So I want to see if I can get, if I put this on top and uh, like that, over there I've got that much that it that it's gone off uh, offline so i want to see if i can uh, get that in other words do this with it to see if i can pull that thing straight with the screws uh, well let's see what happens yeah i don't know who the guy is who developed clamps but i thank god for that man whoever he was or she was uh, so I'm I've clamped this thing. I haven't put any screws in or glued this or anything and I don't think I am actually going to glue it. I'm just going to use screws. Um, if I look at this square that I'm using here, this part of the year is fairly square, but if I go just a little bit further, then then it's going off of true. And the further I go, the more that happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just put in screws here where it is square or as close to square as I can get it. I'm going to put in a screw here and then just straighten it out as I go along. It's probably not completely necessary for everything to be straight on this thing because after all I'm not building a spaceship, I'm building a bathhouse. Although it does have the word rocket in there. Uh, it... It would be okay probably <clears throat> if it was slightly imperfect and uh, I'm, I'm guessing it would be perfectly fine. I just don't want to build a thing where I can eventually not get it over the over the pole. That's that's the only part. So the inside here must remain must have an eight centimeter gap in all in all directions. And uh, maybe some imperfections could even help to anchor it to the pole because obviously the pole isn't going to be perfect and I'm not going to put in any screws from this onto directly onto the pole so it's going to be it's just going to fit over the pole and uh, if, if it is loose at the end and it wants to spin around then I could probably go and put in a screw or something maybe a coach screw through everything but I'm guessing this will work pretty fine I still want to try and straighten it out but just just for my own peace of mind really so yeah, uh, let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've stopped trying to straighten this thing out. Um, this this will become, I guess, just part of the mm. the natural habitat for the bees, and they'll be fine with it the way it is here. But I'm not going to do any more here. Uh, I need to carry on with this because I'm trying to fix this problem, and it's taken over. Oh, well, oh, it's taken up hours and hours and hours of the project. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just going to carry on. Okay, so um, I finished the inner sleeve with the, the fact that the wood is so uneven and so warped, it was less perfect than I would have liked, but I guess it'll work. And this is more or less the diameter of the wood that I'll be putting in there. So all this has to do, is it needs to fit in there. And it, it does that perfectly well at this point. So I could just uh, go and work on, on one. Once I have the actual pole that needs to go in there or that that has to go over, then I can sort out the pole. And uh, so at least this thing is making some progress. Oh dear, that's pretty cool. I'm happy with this. Uh, another couple of days and this will be finished. Now by the time I'm done with this thing, this is now 12 centimeters wide. It's got an eight centimeters diameter in here because that's how wide the pole is or is, that's how wide the thickness of the pole is and then there's a 
about two centimeters on each side so this is roughly 12 centimeters if i take this whole thing and um, it'll add another uh, about eight centimeters every time so the next one the, the this is the pole sleeve so the inner sleeve that will come around this here will be 20 millimeters two centimeters from here on all sides and then another two centimeters of the thickness of the wood so it'll be 12 13 14 15 16 so and another four on this side so that'll be 20 and then eventually we'll end up with a 28 centimeter wide and it'll sh gradually get shorter every time it gets about this much shorter to give a landing space for the bees to land on uh, for the bats to land on so this is this is very cool i like this i'm enjoying this i just wish i had better wood here but uh, then it's going to get more expensive and i want to make most virtually all of this out of off cuts right the pole sleeve is done so i put these spaces on here um, and you see they are staggered uh, this will be the bottom over here this is how far the the next uh, the, the inner sleeve will go is up to there so this will be like a landing spot for bats and they'll then be able to navigate up here all the way as far as they like to go um, now it's just time to to start working on the inner sleeve right at the end i'm going to put a cap on top here put a nice thick wooden roof on top and then i'm going to uh, cover that with metal so you don't get any water ingress there okay, i just added another refinement here um the the slits they're they're about three millimeters deep they didn't go all the way to the to the end like you see right here on top that one there so all I did was I just took this little saw and I just made slits all the way through and then where there's a supporting bracket like this uh, then I just added or whatever you call a support block like this I just extended the slits to go over that because the bees will uh, the, the bats will be able to climb up here and go around to the side as well go around like that too because the next piece of wood will come over and like that so uh, they need to have some kind of support here and handhold or toe hold or whatever you want to call it okay pole sleeve is, is completed uh, now i'm starting on the the inner shell here i've got a four centimeter hole which is more than enough for the bats so they can move from that chamber into where this chamber is going to be and move around the entire thing it's going to be one of these on each of the the, uh, the the sides of the the inner shell as you can see there's another one and then again there's all these these grooves that we're cutting here and you see them also on the other side so they are on both sides and again this is all discarded pieces of wood which is why this one is so warped and uh, i'm now just hoping that the screws are going to pull everything nice and tight so i'm about halfway with the project now this is the the pole sleeve and here we're busy with the inner shell now and uh, this guy I've now marked off where it's going to rest onto the other uh, the, the supports there that you see at the bottom I still need to make a whole bunch of slits on this one on the inside and on the outside same as what I did with these this is the outside and you'll see on the inside as well this only has it on the outside and i'll show you guys the rest okay i'm about two thirds done with this so uh this is the pole sleeve and this is the inner shell this one has got grooves as you can see all the way on the inside and the outside and that one only has it on the outside and then now the, the outer shell must still be constructed. It's going to come around like this. So this is what it looks like at this point. Let me just tilt it back a bit. You see there's some supports in there. There you see them. Oh, you can't see it over here if I hold it like that. There you go. And like so. And then this is where the, where the pole will go in that supports this whole thing. Uh, I, I almost forgot to mention, so uh, Charlie is helping me 
she who, who wears pink gumboots in summer, you will remember from an earlier video, she's my camera lady today. Uh, this is the entrance between the inner and the outer chamber. So a bat can climb up here if the sun is shining from this side and it's too hot. It can either go in higher on the inside or it can move across. You see this one on this side as well. It can move across to this side that might be cooler or come over here because there's one of those on each of the sides. So that's just one thing to make it a bit easier. And you'll see these slits. They're not very deep. They're literally like just a millimeter deep. Some of them are deeper than others. These are made with a dual saw. They're slightly uh, shallower. But there's enough perches there for a bat to climb in and go across. Uh, some places there are cracks and I left that. I decided I'm not going to go and try and fix those cracks. They'll just give added sort of perches to, for the for the um, for the bats to grab onto. So at this point I'm still very happy with this thing. There's, there's quite a bit of work still to be done on this. But like over here there's a lot of place for it to climb. So they'll be, they'll be fine. Right, so I'm, I started now with the, the outer shell. Uh, so this is the outer shell, this one here. And you see it's also been scored. So the bats, when they're moving in this space here, will have sort of toe holds top and bottom on both sides. And it looks like a very small space, but apparently that is what bats love. They like to huddle. So let, let me get on with it. Right, it's been a while, but the bat house is coming along very well. Uh, once it's done, it will... Let me just pick this up. It's quite heavy. This is what it will look like. Let me just step back. All right. And the bats will fly in under there and then crawl up on the inside. This will be the ventilation slit. I still need to cut this and one on the other side as well. Over here, you can see it there. Okay, and then it needs to get a roof on top. And here I'm busy with the roof. Uh, it was just uh, eight off cuts that I mixed and matched and put together until they more or less uh, they more or less fit together. And I put them together with uh, joined them with um, what do you call that thing? biscuit joiner this thing this machine using these little guys people are not familiar with them these are called the biscuits so I just use the biscuit jointer and it's a, it gives you quite a strong joint and so uh, once this is dry it's just going to be machined off a little bit and I want to just straighten those edges so that it's at least the same length although it's strictly speaking not necessary fill up a couple of the openings here just pour in some more cold glue maybe put in some wood filler or whatever in your resin or something in there and then this is going to go on top of this and it's going to have a little bit of an overhang for shade then i'm going to put the top parts above the ventilation slit i'm going to cover this part here in a Fermilite, Styrofoam, whatever you want to call it. And then the whole thing is going to be waterproofed all over and all the way down to the bottom. And then it's, then it's getting the pole into the ground, shaping the pole so it fits in here. I'm not going to bring the pole all the way to the top because I don't want this thing. This is a heavy thing. I don't want this thing to hang on the roof. I want it to rest that right there at the bottom I want that to rest on a sort of a little shoulder that I'm going to leave on the pole so it should make it quite steady then and uh, yeah then it's going to go up here we have the the fine well not it's not finished yet obviously but I finally managed to uh, end my suffering with this thing because this was a nightmare getting these sides it's I don't even want to talk about it that's the problem with using offcuts and, and recycling everything. All right, so this is going to go up here and it'll give a little bit of shade at least uh, for the hottest part of the day uh, to the to the bat house. And now I just need to I just need to fix this fit it to this so it becomes one unit. Right, so this is now nearing completion. This looks a bit like a 
the Empire State Building almost. It's upside down now, obviously, so bats will be, uh, be able to get in here. Uh, this is the ventilation slit. So I'm just putting some foam light on this thing, or styrofoam, whatever you want to call it, and I'm just working around it and uh, using some offcuts that I've got lying around there. So pretty soon this will be completed and then it gets wrapped in a waterproofing compound. Right, so this is how far I am now. Um, I started with a, this uh, membrane and some waterproofing compound. And I just started at the top here and I've now covered this part up to here. So uh, I went over the ventilation slits. I'll cut them out afterwards. And then I'm working from the bottom up so that these overlap in that direction because this is going to be the other way around so water can just run off it and uh, it's time for the for the next bit so I'm going to carry on here now and go all the way to the top which now at this point of course looks like the bottom still right I'm done with most of the the waterproofing as you can see here is the the ventilation slit sorry about the poor light I'm filming this at night but I've covered all of this in that waterproofing compound and membrane all the way down here it's still a bit damp all the way down to here to the roof okay and uh, I'll see if I can carry on tomorrow with this but I'm really happy with the way this has come out or turned out this is looking pretty cool considering that a few weeks ago all of this was throwaway pieces of wood everything here is recycled except for the screws the glue and the membrane although even the membrane was old ones that i had lying around here okay the construction part of the bat house is is done um this is what it will look like when it's up up on the pole uh, down here let me just get down there oops sorry about my finger there this is where the bats will enter and over there as well and they'll be able to move anywhere inside this thing so now the next step is this is the pole that you see there this is the pole that this thing is going to fit on so i now need to trim this pole make the the top slice out like that and that up to about there because that's going to go in the bottom and then we need to get this monstrosity this thing is heavy this thing is very very heavy i can barely lift it i don't know yet how i'm going to because i guess i'm first going to have to slide this onto the pole fix it there with screws then get the pole in the ground and then lift the whole thing as one unit because once this pole is in the ground this is 3.6 meters i think it is once this thing is in the ground i won't be able to get this on top because I'm going to have to go higher than the pole and then to drop it on top of it to slide it in. So I need to, to get this thing in the, in the air uh, and get the pole in the ground as one unit. All right, so I put the, um, the bat house here on its side so we can have a better look at this part. So this is where the, the pole is gonna go in here and uh here's the pole so i need to up to here this is 50 the 50 centimeter mark i need to trim this off so it goes in there and i don't have a clue yet what i'm gonna do i'm sort of leaning towards just starting the chainsaw and doing it with that yeah the chainsaw did its bit so this fits into the uh the bath house and uh, it's a good thing I don't have a wife could I because I would have been in serious trouble now uh, cutting with a chainsaw in the lounge <laughs> so this is going to be the the final uh, sort of resting place for the bat house uh, we've dug the hole there's the hole there's the pole there's the rocket and now I need to figure out a way to get that heavy thing on that pole and then in that hole and I'm doing it by myself well the hardest job is done this thing is in the ground now I must just get it nice and, 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 and plumb and uh, then I can fill up the hole 
cool. So this is when I'm standing with my hands stretched out, this is how far it goes up and then so those are the openings where the bats will fly into there and there and launch themselves out of down here. I chose this because here it has another about an extra meter of drop because bats like to launch out from the their nest so they will have space here to launch out well I'm done here's the final product behind me from the ground all the way up there uh, I made it white to reflect heat because of the extreme temperatures we get here in summer that slot you see over there is a ventilation slot that there will be the two entrances that go around the pole all the way around and that side also all the way around uh, the part up there also that part is insulated all the way around with with a styrofoam and then covered with a membrane and the waterproofing compound i specifically did not paint this part because you don't want the paint to fill the the um, slots there where the bats will be able to to climb up and over there as well they don't want that to be done and so uh, rocket bat house very very cool thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this remember to like and subscribe bye